George, and today we are going to do a deep dive into the anatomy of the bag valve mask. Now, I think we grab these all the time. We use them on patients, but I don't remember the last time that I've actually opened up a bag and thoughtfully gone through everything that's in here. So today, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna dive into this, and we're gonna take a look at all the pieces that does go into the design of this thing and how it works. So let's get started. So here we are, I have what is a Air Life uh, BVM. It comes in this plastic bag, usually hangs on a hook in every resuscitation bay that I know of. And what do we got in here? So we've got the BVM. Um, and we actually have a manual, which I don't know if I've ever looked at one of these. But this is the Air Life Manual Resuscitator, this version here. Um, it's got a nice uh, chart here on the back that we can take a look at um, and look at all the parts. So let's go through it from end to end. I think we're going to start here. Um, at the very end, this is uh, what attaches to the Christmas tree. So uh, this attaches to your oxygen. Uh, and you'll see it has a fairly long hose. So it's pretty long, gives you a fair amount of room to be able to plug it all the way over into the wall and get to your patient. Um, but you'll notice as you get down to here, this thing here. Now, at first glance, you may think, oh, what is this, like an extra protective covering so nothing happens to it so it doesn't get crushed? But in fact, this is actually the oxygen reservoir, and this is one part of the design that will help you deliver close to 100% uh, FiO2 to your patient. Uh, and this ends up being actually one of the reservoirs. Um, and that's really, I think, the first aspect of this design that I think we don't take a lot of uh, time to think about. But if you look closely here, uh, there is what's a, a silicon one-way valve that sits in here. Uh, and as you're holding the bag and oxygen is flowing into the bag, uh, it's open. Uh, when you squeeze, that closes. All right. And what that does is that stops the oxygen and all the contents from going in this direction and allows it to flow into your patient, giving you positive pressure. Um, but what that also does is it stops the flow of oxygen going into the uh, bag. So if you are bagging and every time you bag, the flow of oxygen is halted, that's a bit of a problem. So in order to overcome that, what happens is, is when you squeeze and that valve shuts, the oxygen that is flowing into the bag now flows around and down into the reservoir so that when you release the bag and let go, all that entrained oxygen that's in the corrugated reservoir here floods back into the bag. So you're constantly getting a flow and you're not entraining any um, uh, room air or as little room air as possible. And in fact, in the manual, if you look at it, it says that with the corrugated reservoir, you can get 100% FiO2 on an average adult patient if you're doing this correctly. And that's compared to about 90% on the regular traditional bag reservoir that usually sits uh, on the bottom of some of these designs. So in fact, this corrugated reservoir is actually an improvement or it gives you a better fraction of inspired oxygen than the traditional bag. All right, so let's keep moving. So the next piece is the bag. And as you can see, the bag adjust, so I squeeze and then it comes back to normal. Squeeze, comes back to normal. Um, I don't think we give a lot of thought to that design, but these devices, sometimes they have a strap on it that make it easy to hold, but it has a nice feel to it. Like when I feel this one, uh, it's fairly sensitive. So if, for example, I don't have a good seal and I press, it kind of has that sort of flat feel. But if I have an obstruction and then I try to press, now I really kind of get that sort of tough uh, feel and I can really do a great job of feeling right that sweep spot. When I know that I have no seal and I know that there's no obstruction, there's a nice feel to it and that tactile sensation is kind of built into the device so that you can actually get real feedback in real time 
from just bagging the patient about how well you're doing. That along with looking at the patient and chest rise is going to give you a lot of information. All right, so let's move on to the next part. So here, uh, as you leave the bag and head towards the mask, there's a few structures here that I think are important in terms of the design that we don't think of often. Now, this bag I love because it comes with one of the most important devices right here. This is the uh, peep valve. And many devices uh, don't have a peep valve standard on the exhaust port. So oftentimes you'll get a bag and it'll just look like this with maybe a little cover around it. And you'll say to yourself, oh, this is just what a bag is supposed to look like. But if you have a really sick patient who is shunting physiologically, maybe multifocal pneumonia, maybe ARDS, maybe acute pulmonary edema, this peep valve is gonna be a huge part of your success at oxygenation. Goes on here. And then you can use this to adjust the level of PEEP you want. And it goes from a level of about 5 all the way down to about 20. All right? So that's the PEEP valve. And then over here, you'll notice uh, this little uh, exhalation port. It's really not an exhalation port, but uh, a small port that is then used for um, something like this, which is a manometer and that will allow you to be able to watch how much pressure you're giving uh, when you breathe for the patient and how much PEEP you're achieving. So this is uh, a very valuable piece of information that you can get. Many bags have them standard, others have them as separate attachments or accessories. Uh, this one actually does not have a manometer with it, but it does allow you to add one if you want. Um, Finally, also you'll see there's a one-way valve here. This is sort of the non-rebreather valve, right? So what happens is, is that as you press, this opens, allows for all the entrainment of oxygen, but as you let go, nothing comes back. So you're not getting exhalation, so the patient is not rebreathing their own carbon dioxide. All right, then finally we get to the connector here. Um, standard connector. Um, it does move, so you can adjust it in which direction you want whatever direction is most comfortable to get to the patient's face. Um, typically, you want this facing upwards and this facing out to the side. If it's the other way around, this can be a little bit difficult. All right, and then finally, we get to the mask. Now, uh, I think most people sort of think about the seal, they think about it connecting to the bag, and then they kind of stop there. But there are a couple of other features on many bags that I think are very important. This one, as you can see, has small, um, strap connectors so that if you're successful in getting good oxygenation and ventilation with your patient uh, in the position that you're at and you're able to put a strap around the mask and around the patient's uh, back of the head, then you can be hands-free and just have to use the bag and you don't have to have someone else holding the mask or try to hold the mask with one hand um, and the bag with the other. So that gives you a lot of freedom. Um, it's not something we use often in the emergency department, um, but for transport in EMS or in the OR, this is incredibly useful. All right, and then finally, there's this small little nipple right here that I think is something that we don't think about. Oftentimes, this seal, this area here, is filled with air, and it's what allows you to get a good seal to the face. But sometimes, that seal <clears throat> is not so great. Maybe the bag has deflated over time, it's stored in the environment, and you get kind of something like this where it's much more collapsed. Um, and maybe you're not getting a good seal. Well, one of the ways to solve problems with a good seal is maybe either un removing some air or actually inflating. So this just, this little blue valve here, just, you, it's not a lure lock, you just press down, and then you insert the air, and now you can see I have much more connectivity with the skin. All right. So that is all the features of a standard BVM. I'm glad you're interested in this unboxing. Go ahead and review this video and then go ahead and head to our website, theprotectedairway.com and, and look at all of our content in terms of how to optimize this device and how to use it successfully in any environment that requires oxygenation of a patient in a rapidly evolving airway. And I look forward to seeing you on the other side of this video. Mm -hmm.